This is Sirius XM Doctor Radio. From the heart of the NYU Langone Medical Center, this is Healthy Aging with Dr. Michael Perskin. Welcome to the Healthy Aging Show here on Sirius XM 110 on Dr. Radio at NYU Langone Medical Center. I'm very excited to start with surgery. A JAMA study, that's a journal of the American Medical Association Surgery Peer Review Journal, showed recently that elderly people who have a loss of independence after surgery are more likely to be readmitted or even die. We're going to talk about what this means, what loss of independence is, and why it is so important for recovery from surgery for our geriatric patients. Our guest is the study author, Dr. Julia Berrian, uh, who is the James Thompson Geriatric Surgery Research Fellow and uh, American College of Surgery Clinical Scholar in Residence at the American College of Surgeons in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Berrian, welcome to the program. So tell us a little bit about how you got into this area, which I think is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's, um, you know, I've I've been very interested in, in in care of the older adult, um, actually, for a long time. I originally thought I was going to become a geriatrician and ended up going into surgery. And so the intersection of these two fields is really where my real passion and interest lies. So, I mean, as, as you obviously know, and, and many of your listeners know, what matters most to older adults isn't always whether or not they die or get readmitted. And so the purpose of this particular study was really just to try and look at something that really matters to older adults after surgery, which is, you know, how am I going to live afterwards? And in this particular study, we really tried to use a proxy for, you know, can you move around, mobility? Can you take care of yourself, your activities of daily living, you know, bathing, eating, dressing? And then what's your home situation like? Do you need extra help in the home? Do you even get to go home or do you have to go to a facility? Okay, so if you if you were advising someone whose uh, you know aunt or mother was having surgery, what would you um, what would you tell them to do? Well, or I mean, hospital, try to get them discharged. I think that's part of it, but I think it's not the whole picture. I think the most important thing to me from studies like this one is certainly there's a relationship here between what we're seeing in, in terms of loss of independence and factors that are already there, and we know are kind of risk factors or that kind of pre-exist things like frailty. So already having weakness and slow walking speed and having weight loss and having characteristics of what we think of as someone who's maybe frail. And so I think that studies like this one really point towards not just thinking about these kind of predetermined risk factors ahead of time, but thinking about how that might affect people after the operation and changing the way that we talk to them before they have an operation so that you can really think about what is most important to you and What are you hoping to achieve with having an operation so that we can really move a lot closer towards what we call like patient-centered care? So what what is your next step with this study? So for for this, I think the most important thing for me is is just promoting those preoperative conversations in order to really better align goals of care and the care provided. And I'm continuing to work more with the coalition project, the Coalition for Quality and Geriatric Surgery, in terms of standardizing some of those practices and procedures. Dr. Berrien, um, I would love to discuss this more, but we've reached the end of our time and we've got to take a break. <laughs> so thanks for coming on. I appreciate your time and hopefully we'll have you back when you have more to say about this topic and good luck in your research on geriatric surgery. 